Hello, and welcome to Have a Chat. I'm your host for today's show, Judy Loche. I'm joined by my wonderful co-host, Veronique Arsenault. So happy to be back on this gorgeous Monday in Miramichi. It's a bit balmy. It is. <laughs> We'll call it balmy. Oh my gosh, it is stinking hot for sure. We're here in Miramichi, New Brunswick at the Rogers Studio, which is lovely and cool. And outside it's about 30 degrees um, with humidity, so we're happy to be inside. Welcome, thank you for tuning in. We always start our show with a thought-provoking question or mostly a quote, and Veronique has brought something today. But you know what? He, you can't go wrong with Buddha. He's got a lot of wisdom. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, thousands of candles can be lighted from a single candle. And the life of the candle will never be shortened. Happiness never decreases by being shared. I so try to follow that. I know. I try to bring that positivity and enter energy into a circle that will be contagious yeah. enough to breed a good outcome. And I find you can just do the opposite too. Mm -hmm. If you don't like that candle mm -hmm. and you don't do what you're supposed to do to bring good people to the table, um, it can go in the opposite direction. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, unfortunately we tend to affect uh, a lot of people around us and we don't even realize it, right? For the good or the bad. Exactly. And I think, you know, the, I, I try, we all have those days when, you know, it's a little bit harder than others, but I do try and, and be a positive influence around me, not just, you know, I, I don't, I, I'm usually pretty happy, but um, not fake happy, real happy, yeah. but I do try and be a positive influence and around me. And you are. And we, like you said, we all have our days, but I think for the most part, we give back and share a lot yeah. of our good qualities with other people. Yeah, well, it's just like on, on our Mondays, right? We, yeah. We try and do the best we can when we get here. So here we are on another Monday, mm -hmm. and like I said way back when, I think it was in the new year, that I have made a pact with myself to do what I want to do at my age yeah. and not be told or felt obligated yep. to feel obligated to do something just because someone else expects me to. Yep. So I did that this weekend again. Yes. I took advantage of my pool, and uh, Friday night, Gerard and I went with that with friends quietly. Yes dinner and then we went to the movie Twister just because it's mindless yep. and it is an actual happening thing though that once you see the movie you're, you're feeling so blessed that you live in this area. <laughs> I can't I mean, even imagine. Anything can come this way however yep. um, you know it was taking place in Oklahoma and yep. people are actually living that so you get to watch on screen the devastation and the mind-blowing yep. after effects of such things as these huge tornadoes. Yeah. So we went to that and then I had a funeral to attend which you know, I go to so many here in Eakin. It's not that um, I just dread going to them because it's such a sad time. Uh, yeah. But I like to celebrate those people I've known all my life. So yeah. I, I think it's important. And so I took that day, that day, and then I swam and I walked my dog and I visited people on Sunday and did family time things. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was kind of like light the candle for other people yeah. and share my good times with them to support them. Yeah. So on the other hand, you fully engaged in a festive weekend. Well, it, I mean, as usual, it was a busy weekend here, right? And, and I think it's so important to take those few moments that you can to kind of recharge your own batteries, right? Because mm -hmm. you've got a lot uh, going on in your life yes. and, and in general. And so you, you absolutely need that time. And so, um, yeah, it was, it was an incredibly busy weekend as it usually is. So Friday night, I got to go to the opening ceremonies for the rock and roll festival it was a 30th um, uh -huh. anniversary and like it, it was amazing to see everything going on in Queen Elizabeth Park they had um, an open-air market as hosted by seven threads um, and then um, you know got a uh, they had a band playing and then they had all the cars and you know I love seeing those cars they're they're fantastic and then you know, against my better judgment, I got up um, before the crack of dawn on Saturday morning and did another 5K race. Whoa. So I had done the Irish Festival one a couple of weekends ago. And then Burnaby Days had uh, a fundraiser 5K um, race. So I started running again this yeah. year. And um, <laughs> I am very convinced it was uphill both ways. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I never saw a course like that. I'm like... It just, it's so hilly and it just, it just never ended. It, it never ended. But you know what? I, the Miramichi River runners were so kind. Yeah, they're a great group. They were so kind. Like they were giving me tips on, on improving, mm -hmm. you know, my, my pace, but also yeah. my form. So yeah. I didn't use as much energy. And then, you know, one lovely fella, his name was Andy, um, ran by me 
as they do. <laughs> and, um, and so he said, you're breathing so good. Oh, and I'm like, me. I'm just really happy I'm breathing. I'm high five. Thank I'm you. so proud of you. Thank like, you. I mean, you're doing so much and you're yeah. really improved. Like, your goal at the beginning of mm -hmm. the year was to do things that... Um, improved your health and yeah, well-being absolutely and mine is my mental health and well-being yeah, and absolutely. taking time for me out of my crazy lifestyle mm -hmm. but you're also doing it in the other manner mm -hmm. of fulfilling yourself with yeah. um, better eating and yeah. better and running absolutely. and engaging socially now yeah. I'm a very social person yeah I just stepped back from the extreme social life that I am as far as like yeah. networking people for me and you are still doing that, but that's yeah. you're younger than well, me. Remember? Yeah, sure, we'll go with that. But it was, but also it was, a, it was a nice fundraiser for Miramichi Housing Solutions, yeah, oh, good. Uh, which was great. And then I headed over to another fundraiser because I had to refuel after that run because I, you know, it was a lot. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it was fantastic actually. But um, I had to refuel. So the Nelson Doyle Dancers had a fundraiser pancake breakfast mm. at the King Kin Center, and so um, I headed over. To, it was delicious, and um, you know, got a, a great little picture with uh, a couple of the dancers and and then I was out on the road pretty much most of Saturday yes. afternoon and then I had actually intended on getting in my jam I did get in my jammies. You told me that. I did get in my jammies. It changed. <laughs> I did get in my jammies. I was sitting on my couch and I was cuddling with the floofers and, and then I got a text message from uh, you know Patty Quinn. He and I have been dear friends for, oh, for know. you know almost 20 years yes. now and, and we have a real love of live music and yes. we've been to a lot of concerts together especially in the last year but anyway he had an extra ticket last minute Aww, to Haywire and Leanne yes. for the Rock and roll festival so um i got out of my jam good for you though he would appreciate you doing that. well we had a great time and you know and but one thing i did realize is that standing on concrete in, at my advanced mm, age they're not advanced stop. is is quite uncomfortable so for hours on end time? yeah so we did find a picnic table at one point oh. to sit which was good but fantastic amazing crowd the organizers good. were um, wonderful you know the bands were incredible we just had a great time mm -hmm. so no regrets no it was one yeah it was a wonderful weekend and then you know lots on the go on sunday as well Beautiful, but very neat yeah so let's turn over to something that is phenomenal as well and that is the 2024 paris olympics yeah now I have got to say that I was blown away with the opening performance of Celine Dion. Oh, and she's watch? so amazing. Well, for what she's been through, yeah. uh, it's four years now, I think, that she's been battling the stiff person yeah. stiff person syndrome, which is debilitating yeah. and yeah. extreme spasms. And her documentary has been the most successful of all time, I Am, I I am Celine. Celine. Yeah. And I haven't yet gotten up the courage to watch it because no. uh, I've seen her, like I said, twice in Vegas and mm -hmm. she was at the top of her game. Mm -hmm. And then to watch her uh, battle this incredible um, neuromuscular disease mm -hmm. is just to me heartbreaking. But she was so moving and so incredible and such a powerhouse mm -hmm. at the first level mm -hmm. of the Eiffel Tower she performed. Oh my goodness. Um, in this stunning gown and she gave it 100 percent yeah and i was very emotional watching her yeah she did la him le uh, l'amour oh, yeah. and uh oh my gosh you have to google it very neat i will uh, yeah i haven't watched it but i've heard such remarkable feedback about her in particular um because and she's such an icon you know and yes. her voice is so powerful um and she has had just an incredibly difficult mm. uh, number of years and you know and and she, she she shared her gift for decades, yeah. so just incredible to she see She nailed it. Yeah. What do you think of the controversy, all the other uh, talk going on about the, you know, people are very, very upset mm -hmm. about the mockery, mm -hmm. I guess you would call it. All, uh, there's 2.5 billion Christians in the world, and, mm -hmm. and the, um, the drag queens, I guess, took stage, and um, they basically mocked the... Uh, Jesus and the apostles. Well, I've seen two reports. I've seen okay, that it was share not, your it was not actually, in fact, a depiction of the Last Supper. Mm -hmm. It was meant to be a depiction of because the the Olympic Games are uh, Greek in origin, and okay. so uh, there is um, uh, a picture, and it's of a Greek uh, Greek. I think it's a Greek god, but anyway, okay. um, and it's it's a similar similar scene, not quite that stark, but similar mm -hmm. scene, and they're all they're all drinking and partying and everything. And, and it's the same picture in the middle of that particular Greek figure. And so I've seen reports that it was meant to be that, okay. like the origins of the games from the Greek perspective. Oh, okay. um, I understand, you know, the, the controversy and the hurt and the, you know, reaction. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because not nobody, and you and I are both Catholic, but nobody would want to see their religion 
mocked publicly, especially at an event like that. So it's, it's, I can understand the reaction from, from the explanation that I've seen, it was not intended to be that. That's good. Yeah, it was intended to be more the Greek origins of the games. And what about Marie Antoinette? the last queen to be executed during the French Revolution. Yeah. Um, they had her, well, so they had her, I think, uh, headless. Yes. And yeah, singing. Yeah, she was beheaded. Yeah. So, beha yeah. yeah. So yeah. I know. Yeah. Very, it, it controversial for sure. It is. And it's created a lot of talk, um, you know, which I don't know if that was necessarily their intent. I don't know. Um, but, you know, I, like I said, I understand the reaction being, you know, being a practicing Catholic, you know, I, I definitely would not want to think that my my own um, religion and, and beliefs were mocked so publicly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I can hope that, that that explanation is the right, you know, is the correct one, but... There might know, be more to come on. Yeah, that. at this point, that's, that's kind of where it's at. But yeah. I understand the outrage, I do. So let's talk about the really uh, heart-wrenching scenario out in Jasper mm -hmm. and other parts of the out west area, mm -hmm. Alberta. Um, um, I've never been to Jasper. I've spent mm. a lot of time in Banff, yeah. a lot of yeah. time in Banff, like 30 years skiing there. And uh, I just stayed there. Yeah. You know, that was my kind of my park. Mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't venture into Jasper, which is amazing, horrendous yep. loss. Yeah. Right? Well, and it's like, I mean, you know, wildfires and forest fires are, are just horrifying to watch. Mm. We've seen them, you know, over and over and over again the last few years out in the West in Alberta. You know, in, in Fort McMurray and things yeah. like that. I mean, I, you know, I forever will remember the videos of people fleeing the fires in Fort McMurray with okay. the flames coming from everywhere. Okay. And I mean, we're seeing it again in Jasper and it's just, you know, people's life's work is burning to the ground. Yeah. And, you know, and, and of course we have all of our firefighters that are coming from all over to try and help them. And so proud of them. It's like, incredible. My dad was a firefighter, yes, as you was, know, for yeah. 35 years, and he, he was watching the news and oh. at his elderly age still saying, I wish I was on the ground. Yeah. I wish I was one of those people that was helping to go, save yeah. lives, which they, they have saved so many lives yeah, and infrastructures. Yeah. And they have saved like some of the main, uh, like the hospital mm -hmm. and a main event center and a school. Like they've been protecting those big, big areas, yeah. but uh, people have had huge losses. Oh my goodness, I can't even imagine actually how much has been lost in the last couple of weeks, but you know, I hopefully uh, everything will be under control soon and yeah. and you know, no more no more and rain yeah. please come like they had That's some rain thing, but eh? not enough yeah. rain and we are needing rain as well. Well, it's getting pretty dry, you know. It's, yeah. I mean, we're starting to I know I'm noticing with my own lawn and, and things like yep. that and as you know, as I'm out in the in the parks and things like that, it's quite it's getting pretty dry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Veronique, do you have any plans, or, or do you want to talk anything about the upcoming long weekend? I have my son, <laughs> first of all, I should yes. jump in there first, I yeah. guess, being rude. Um, Evan and Jamie are coming home Perfect. for the first time in a long time yeah. tomorrow night. Yeah. And as long as my kids, their men, are under my roof, I'm a happy mm -hmm. mama. And yeah. they're going to bring their big dog. So I have my big dog. Marvin. They're both they're both shoot <laughs> noodles, and they bond well. Yeah. And I can't wait for them to come home. Marvin. Marvin. Marvin and Zara, they're going to have a great old time. fur grandbaby. My fur grandbaby. Yeah. And so that's going to be nice. And then Jansen will come home on the long weekend. Yeah. And so it doesn't matter how old they are, I'm, I'm the most content when they're in my house with oh, us. Oh, yeah, I can understand that. And they're such wonderful young men. and Good, good it, company. Yeah, and, and, and their partners are lovely too. So it's, you know, it's a wonderful Joyful time. Joyful time. Yeah. Summer's yeah. a great time anyway. It's my season. I don't yeah. care how hot it is. Um, there's always a place to cool down. Yep. And yeah. you can boat, and you can camp, yeah. and you can swim, and yeah. you don't have to worry about putting extra clothes on. You just get up and go, yeah. and you can always find somewhere cool. Yeah, and it, it yeah, it gets a, it gets a bit. Uh, you know, I mean, I find this this weather a bit tough. Like it, but uh, again, I am very fortunate. I can find a cool place to mm -hmm. be, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't have to worry about that part. But yeah. I'm really perfect around 23 degrees. Ah, <laughs> to be precise. To be very specific, yes. I'm very perfect around 23 degrees. But you know what? This long weekend, there's lots going on. You know, there's there's um, Chatham Head Days are happening yes. this weekend, and uh, the folk song Mary Folk Song Festival is happening this weekend. And we have a date. For that, don't we, we do have a date for that, and I'm looking forward to that. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, and it's just you know, it's a night. It's long weekends for me are always about family. You know, can you do that? Can you? Take I will. Time I will be able to spend a bit of time. Yeah, I will right. be able to spend a bit of time. Although there is lots going on this weekend, I I do try and. You know, I'm still trying to keep Sundays for myself. I'm not doing all that well um, on doing it, but I'm, I'm you know, I, I take what I can. But yeah, there's so much going on this weekend, yeah. and and I love it. And you know, I'm I'm excited. It's, 
the volunteer hours, and we talk about this a lot, but the volunteer hours that go into organizing all of these events, mm -hmm. like, you know, Barnaby Days last weekend, mm -hmm. and the Rock and Roll Festival, and then now, you know, we've got Chatham Head Days, mm -hmm. folk and the Folk Song Festival, like, they're all run by volunteers. And I'm just going to throw it out there that you see, you see online some negativity, and, and pick this, and pick that apart, and pick that apart, but, you know, don't. Because unless you're out there volunteering yeah. and, and realizing how much work and you can just call the shots from behind and say you should have done this and you should have done that, do it yourself. Yeah. That's, that's how I feel. And that's the, that's the if struggle, you can do better. right? Is, is, and a lot of these festivals have kind of become a victim of their own success because mm -hmm. like everybody wants to go to them because they're so great so they don't want to volunteer at them. But you know? to have success, you need it. And that's the thing, right? So and, don't and they need, it up. They need new ideas and they need new blood and yeah. they need new energy. and, and, and I think I think there was a power on the weekend. I think I missed it. Yes. But um, like, there's just like there's so much to do. But just remember that these people are giving their time. You can as only well. give so much of a show or an event when yeah. they only have so many people on the ground, yeah, right? And, like, and funds too, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, because everything's uh, fundraising. Exactly. Veronique, we're going to go to break, mm -hmm. but just real quickly, uh, our, you know, we've had followers watching your journey and your mom's journey, and just an update as to how she's doing. Yeah, so, um, thanks. Mom is as good as she can be at this okay. point. Mom, mom is, is in advanced Alzheimer's, and yes. so she, you know, still knows us, which is remarkable to me because Grandma didn't right. very early on. Grandma lost speech and all that, but Mom still knows us, but um, not connected to reality. And, okay. and, you know, every day I'll go in and I'll say, Mom, how was your day today? And she'll say, oh, my goodness, it was so busy. I was up in the helicopter with Gerard and Judy this oh, morning. Did, did you see that again yes. lately? <laughs> yeah. I have and to learn how to ride that helicopter. I <laughs> this and is going to be a story. She said I was, you know, checking out the whole city and, oh, and then I had to come back and I was moving the furniture so in the basement and then I finally, you know, finally sat down to have supper. And I'll always say, oh my goodness, mom, what a busy day. You must be so tired. And oh yes. Yeah. So we've learned, you know, we've, we've come to grips with that. We've learned to, you know, kind of roll with it as, as it happens. As I said, I'm still, she, she tells me she loves me and that's all that and matters. And that's all that's important. That's all that and matters. we love her back. Yeah. So on that note, we're going to say, come right back very soon. There's going to be more Have a Chat. We're going to bring on two first time guests and uh, go grab a cold drink. See you very soon. Hello, thank you for coming back for more Have a Chat and tuning in with myself, Judy Loge, the host for today, and my co-host, Veronique Garceneau. Yeah, so happy to be here with you, Judy. Yeah, summer's flying by, but I know. Anyway, we're going to have a little holiday coming up soon. <laughs> yes. We are so happy to have first-time guests, I think, pretty yeah. sure, uh, Melanie Gillis Buckley, president of the Napa and Agricultural Show, and Tim Taylor with us today, and he is the first vice president. Welcome. Oh, Thank you. Ahead. So nice to have you come on and tell us all about this big event. And we'll start first of all by asking each of you to tell us a few things about yourself so the viewers can get to know you a little bit. Melanie? Oh, um, so I'm Melanie Gillis Buckley. I live in Napin. I've always lived in Napin. And I'm a wife uh, and a mother of three, grown children now, yes. or close to grown children. Yeah. And uh, I'm a correctional officer. Uh, right. Yeah. And uh, but I spend most of my time volunteering with the Napanee. Yes, you are. <laughs> I probably do more. Really with the, active yeah. volunteer. <laughs> yeah. We sure appreciate being as active yeah. as you are. Yeah. So you have a beautiful family. I know your children. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. Napan Leon Bremen used to call it um, God's country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that or the uh, capital of yeah. uh, Miramichi. Yeah. He was so yeah. cute. Absolutely. Tim, a little tidbit about yourself, maybe. Uh, uh, my parents were both from Napan, but yes. I grew up in Nelson. And then eventually I married a girl from Napin, so now we live in Napin. You oh went my. home. I went home. <laughs> you yeah. Went home. Yeah. I'm actually actually we live on my grandparents' estate. Like okay. we live there now. I have two two adult girls. I got four grandchildren. Wow, well, I'm sure they keep you busy. Yeah, and I'm now retired. <laughs> well you look like you're happy. You're smelling all about it, right? Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. I love it. Thank you for time. Keep volunteering. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what happened. you know what? And it's so it's so amazing because so many of our volunteers were very active in their work life yeah, and then me. retired uh -huh. right? and then and then retired and now spend more time yeah. volunteering than they did when they were working. It's so true. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so Melanie, tell us a bit about the history of the Napin Agricultural sh Show. Mm -hmm. Went off there. <laughs> um, how many years has it been going on and like how did it get started? 
Well, this is our 33rd year for the, the four-day um, okay. agricultural show, but it did start back um, 51 years ago. There was a group of community members who were looking to raise some months, uh, funds for the nap and ball team for uniforms. Oh, cool. So they had a horse hall and a supper, yeah. and I believe there might have been a, a horseshoe pitching competition then, mm -hmm. too. And that was the first beginning of the, um, of the nap and they went to a one day event to a two day event. And then 33 years ago, we, wow. you know, expanded. Four days. Yeah, four days. So 33 years ago, they cleared the land, they built the barns, and uh, now we have uh, some beautiful facilities and uh, yeah. That's, a, that's awesome. Perfect. I love it. Mm -hmm. Turn it to you, Tim, for our aspiring tough farmers out there. Yeah. What's the most challenging event in the competition, and do you train for it? I don't. I don't train for it. And yeah. my, no. out, of, out of the four or five events we have, I pick the hay hay roll. Okay. So they use a round bale of hay. Okay. And then they you have to roll at a certain distance, you know, Good with your partner. So that would take a lot of pushing yes. and I saw strength. It, I saw it a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's uh, it's yeah, it's uh, it's pretty heavy. How do you like? So you build up and you lift well, weights and all that. It's the farmers, right? I know. So, so you've got strength to start so, with. So they should have strength. So, <laughs> so that's, that's the that's part of the farmer competition is you know strength and, yeah. and the work. So it's I, fun. Yeah, it's fun. Are it's you competitive by nature? No, I'm not. I'm one little bit no. either. Are you, Melanie? A, a little bit, yeah. I'm yeah. not yeah. at all. Vero, you are. Oh yeah, I have a bit of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you'd be right in there pushing the hay with all you were. Working. Yeah, I'd get rolled over by it, but <laughs> I would absolutely give it my best shot. Sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Melanie, can you tell us some memorable moments from past shows? Uh, yeah. Um, well, the, our motto or theme at the fair, which has been for forever, as long as we've been uh, established, is to educate the general public on uh, agriculture and community living. Mm -hmm. And a few years ago, um, we were, it was a day after the show, and it was a busy weekend, and people were picking up their prizes. and. Um, and we have a we have you can show animals, but we also have a lot of non uh, you know animal mm -hmm. exhibits. We have photography and foods and horticulture mm -hmm. and crafts for people mm -hmm. to have their friendly competition with. And there's prize money for everything. And so anyway, the Monday after the sh show, um, there was a little girl, and it was Annie Robichaud from the North Knappen Road. And uh, I don't know how old she is now, but I remember yeah. at the time she was just a little girl, and uh, she was showing me her her prizes and her first uh, oh. ribbon and you know, what she got ribbons and what she was going to do next year. And, you know, I thought, you know what, we're, you know, this is a memorable moment yeah. and we're, uh, you know, we're going to, we're doing things yeah. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the, I guess another moment, if I can share, yeah, would be uh, 2022 when we had the musical ride for the second time yeah. under the big roof. And it was a hot day like today, it but it was about 10 degrees cooler yeah. under the roof. It was. And it was sold out. And uh, it was just a special, special moment. Anytime the musical ride visits, yes. it's a special Make moment. But underneath so that roof, beautiful. I think you might have been there. Man. Yeah, with my, actually, yeah. my whole family is there. Yeah. So Michael and Beth and Patrick and mom and dad. Yeah, yeah. we were all there. Yeah. And yeah. So that, those are special moments and yeah. a lot of hard work it put well, into I think the, them. the first time the musical ride came, I think it rained. Rain. Yeah, it quite a it bit. rained. Well, yes, yeah. it did. Like it didn't rain all day no, until, no, no. until the until five o'clock. Yeah, and then yeah. they were supposed to go on at six. And right, it rained. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just like yeah. prom this yeah. year. We don't have to worry about that anymore. I know. Anyway. I know. Yeah. Poor Judy was a MC for the yeah. walk and right. prom, and all you it did was rain. Control weather, but I'm no. sure you'll have. I'm praying that you have great yeah. weather. It's been a great summer so far for yeah. weather. Those breakfasts. Everyone oh. talks about your breakfast at the Napa yeah. Agricultural Show. Tell us because they're delicious. Um, what to look forward to? Well, start with my wife as the coordinator. Oh. Oh. She, she's looking after wow. it now. Yeah. Good job. Uh, so the breakfast on Saturday is from seven to ten. And it's bacon, eggs, hash brown, uh, juice, and tea or coffee. And give the date again, Tim. That uh, this breakfast August the tenth. August tenth is the first breakfast. First breakfast. The first. Yeah. And okay. then on Sunday, it's from eight to eleven, okay. and it's ham instead of bacon. Nice. Oh. And uh, yeah, so it's, it it's, it's twelve dollars for adults, and it's good, good, uh, six dollars for kids between five and fourteen. Beautiful. Twelve dollars for that whole thing. I mm -hmm. know. That's yep. incredible. Yep. That's incredible, and yep. it's and it's all cooked by volunteers. Right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's all volunteers. And actually, my wife, when I left today, she was on the phone lining them, yeah, lining them up. Hard. And uh, <laughs> you have to have a lot of help for that, though, too, because of the serving and the amount of people just there's coming. There's a, a serving, and and the kitchen Many. crew is a good kitchen crew. We have yeah. two yeah. kitchens running actually. Right. We run the kitchen in the hall, yeah. 
for the eggs and the and the tea and coffee and all that stuff. And then the the hash browns Oof. and the bacon are cooked in in the canteen building because uh -huh. it's a deep fried in the grills, right? So they so there's a group of men back there cooking. Then they bring it out to the front. Then they combine everything and. You but you plate. must have it pretty down pat by now, right? You're, yes, you're doing this breakfast, your little uh, assembly line gets yeah, it all it's done. it's set up pretty good. It's just yes. now that uh, she's finding that some of the older people are now yeah. older, right? Exactly. So she's really working this year on getting some new young blood. Yeah. Yeah. It happens yeah. everywhere. These yeah. people that, you know, uh, just for example, the CWL, we see the women that give back and give back and give back. There's a lot of them aging, yep. Yep. and they need people to step up and fulfill yep. those roles, and yep. it's happening everywhere. Yep. Right? Well, and I always worry when I'm the youngest volunteer oh, awesome. in the room <laughs> because, you know, I'm going to be 52 this year, right? And I think, like, there needs to be younger, younger more, yep. you know, right. with, with yep. different energy and different yep. thoughts and new ideas and all that kind of stuff. So, I, yeah, I always worry about that when I'm that. A lot of people don't want to take the leadership role, but yeah, if you no. ask them to do a specific task, yeah, they yeah. usually... Absolutely. Step up and do it, and that's how, yeah. how we evolve in getting our, you know, directors. Yeah. yeah. But you're pleased with how everything's come together, and you feel that you're ready to roll, and that you have everything in place, yes. and you're not struggling with the yes. volunteer part of it. Yet. Not well, yet. Let's talk about the, let's talk <laughs> yeah. about the yeah. planning part, yeah. right? Okay. Because it doesn't happen overnight, no. right? No. Like, and I know, you know, having been president of the Irish Festival a couple oh. times, you start planning next year, like the week after. <laughs> that's you right. recover yeah. from this year, right? Yeah. So talk to us about the planning, the volunteers, the fundraising, all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So yeah, we, we start uh, planning right away in the early fall for the following August. Um, we meet every month. We do take a couple of months off yeah. in the winter. <laughs> Give yourself a bit of a yeah. break. <laughs> and usually, well, we take uh, some time off from meetings, but usually there's not, not a week that goes by that we're not talking about something yeah. or yeah. trying yeah. to get some planning going for mm -hmm. different things. Um, the fundraising, we, you know, uh, we have our weekly Cut the Jack of Hearts, yeah. which is great, um, and it really helps us because we're, you know, we have a lot of grounds. You know, it comes with a lot of bills. Yeah. You know, we have to, you know, refurbish some things and and uh, mm -hmm. you know keep things you know updated yeah, updated and, yeah and, and uh, yeah. yeah so um yeah the, the planning is great and then when we have uh you know we have our sponsors that are great every year that uh, help us out with the prize money right for the whole competition the four days mm -hmm. and uh you know local businesses are so phenomenal important. yeah it's yeah. so important it's so good and we rely on our sponsors and our exhibitors to share their talents yeah. and then the volunteers and the spectators to support us, right? So we're kind of a trifold um, operation, but we do have phenomenal board of directors. We have 22. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah, it is, yeah. And yeah. a lot of them look like keep coming back. Yeah, like yeah. They're, you it's know. a positive thing. That's yeah. why you want yeah. to join a table that's really doing wonderful things and seeing success, right? Right. And and positivity, as yeah. we as we alluded to in the quote, you know, yeah. that's that you're lighting each other's candle, and people want to be joining the force. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim, for horse novices, mm -hmm. um, what would be the difference between the draft horse and the light horse um, competition? Well, the draft horse is mostly at least two or more. Like they're two or four or six oh, or okay. eight, and they do it to a three, like yeah. a unicorn. Uh, light horse is mostly a single horse with a single rider, and most of it is is timed events. Okay. But with a draft horse is more or less driving skills, because oh. you got oh. six or eight reins, right? So you're oh. you're you're running you're <laughs> running all different imagine. things. So they do wow. a they have a course they all do, and then okay. So the the draft horse is more. I don't know what you call it, skilled, but more, skills, yeah. they work more with right. thing. But the, the light horse is, is, is mostly a speed, yeah. you know, Excitement. it's, it's skill too, but yeah. it's mostly, that's the difference is okay. one's the, the, the track or the, the course, okay. and then the light horse is a lot of, is uh, time defense. I hope they get a draft <laughs> or a light beer after it's all over, do they? <laughs> that would be only fair. They probably have some somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere. A reward, a reward of yeah. some kind. Yeah. I'm always, I'm always amazed, like I'm terrified of horses, we talked about that off camera, but I'm always amazed at like the skill that it takes to maneuver, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I think part of it is they have to back up the, yep. Yep. you know, the yep. carriage, not a carriage, wagon, wagon thank you, yeah. <laughs> it's not a carriage, the wagon into like between, it's like parallel parking, right, yeah. like cones, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, I can't, the car is hard I enough, but now you got to make the horses do it. Yeah, and the thing is, if you've ever, I can't back up a trailer, Yeah. yeah. But, uh, the, but, right. the, but the front wheels right. turn on the wagon, Yeah. right, so when they're backing up, they've got to kind of maneuver 
different. Tricky, yeah. very tricky. But the, but the thing there is, what I really enjoy the most about it is when they come running into the ring and that whole building starts vibrating. Yeah. Like with the wave oh, of them big yeah, horses yeah. coming oh, in there, yeah. like they're coming in thumping and the yeah. whole building's just vibrating. Yeah. Like and they're a majestic animal. Let's just oh. say they're yeah. so stately and gorgeous. And I, 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 my uncle in Cape Breton used to own racehorses. Yeah. So I was allergic to the hay and I couldn't go too close. But my gosh, it was amazing yeah. to watch them. They're just incredible beings. Well, yeah. and yeah, animal. that's the one thing that dad truly wishes he could have as a horse. Yeah. You know, like, and so we, that's why we love to go to the Napin uh, Agricultural Show because mm -hmm. You know, he gets to he gets to see them in action and everything, and so and and I get to share in that because he truly does wish that he could have a horse. But I'm like, you go away too much, and I have to look after the horse, <laughs> yeah, and that's right. not going to happen. But good job to the team. Yeah, that, you know, are, is in charge of the horse racing. That's that's a huge ability. Yeah. Right. Yeah. One that I wouldn't be able to do. Melanie, what's the funniest thing that you've ever seen happen? <laughs> oh, there's been some moments, but you're probably referring to include a picture Tim. that I shared. Oh, include Tim in a story. Uh, that? No, no, I have funny stories about Tim. He's my <laughs> He's my support for the Yes, I'm joking. Um, but I shared a picture the other day, and I think Veronique's referring to that. It's a, the, we have a costume class for the horses, mm -hmm. and some of the kids come up, and adults come up with some really great things. But this was years ago, maybe 10 years ago, mm -hmm. and it was my brother had a draft horse, mm -hmm. and it, he dressed, dressed up like an Amish oh. man, and my sister dressed up like the pregnant uh, Amish wife right. with the carrying the baby right. and then yeah. my, my three kids were in yes. the picture dressed up and they had authentic Amish oh, dresses that I got in Lancaster oh, once oh on a trip. Goodness, eh? But uh, yeah. yeah, it was pretty funny. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was, a, it was a disturbing, cute but, yeah. but it was a but cute funny. Yeah. 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 That was Julie dressed Julie up. Julie and Jeffrey. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a Marcy cute and Brenda and Katie were in it. Family affair. Yeah, it was funny. Beautiful. So Tim, why do you think it is so important? because we realize it is, to keep these types of events going. Well, it's, uh, it, it keeps up with the Napping way of life for years. You know, like it's, Farming. that's Napping, right? Yeah. Like that's the way Your it's mark. Been. Yeah, and it's, uh, it brings together all ages. Like yeah. the little kids like it, the older people love it. You know, like, the, right. the, 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 so it's, it, it gets everybody. Like everybody, has, there's always something for something for somebody to do mm -hmm. right. or to watch. Yeah. It's true. And I think for the viewers too, we don't have much time, but we want to again give the dates and um, you know when it kickstarts and how long it runs so that people know when to show up. So August 11th, or sorry, August the 8th is the first day. Okay. And it's the evening, it's Thursday night. And nice. It's gates open at 4.30, I believe. Okay. And then there's some kid events to start with and then it's the, the, the Napping Horse Hall. Mm -hmm. So that's the big, that's a big draw for the weekend. All yeah, right, and then, absolutely. Uh, the next day, then you have all straight out the whole everything's day. Everything's mixed together. Yeah, the breakfast Along is with your... Along a few, Mer Melanie has a few entertainment yeah. things lined up nice. for in between, nice. but it's, yeah, so it's light horse, draft horse, light horse, draft horse. Okay. And Just before we up. head to break, give us a couple of highlights. Well, I'm um, quickly go through, we're going to have at least 65 horses in, in, uh, on the showgrounds that weekend. Oh. We're going to have a, a dairy farm, okay. uh, dairy display. We have six or four oxen coming from Windsor, Nova Scotia, um, and we have. Do they travel from like? Yeah, they, far. Well, that's Windsor. Ish. Yeah, that's pretty far. Ish, yeah. yeah, he travels pretty far, and he comes every year. But we have two teams, and we'll do mm. tug of war with them and have fun, and they'll do that's displays. Awesome. So the beautiful oxen. Um, we're going to have we have Duncan, Pogo show. The, right. He was recently on uh, Britain's Got Talent, so we're going to have oh. that along with our tough farmer, our lumberjack competition, all the displays. There's something for everyone, like Tim said. Like it. so, August eighth, 9th, tenth, and eleventh. Perfect. That's good to know. And everyone has to mark their calendars. I want to do the. I, I, I want to do the axe throwing. I'm not. I, I don't <laughs> want to be near you then. No. I'll be, I'll be taking pictures from <laughs> about a mile away. <laughs> Getting a drone in there. I know. It's not good. It's <laughs> Any not final good. words, Tim, to our audience? Again, I mean, I know you're super excited about this, and Melanie too. And we want to thank you for the dedication yeah. as being president and first vice on this I whole. Just, uh, Come on out and enjoy us. Yeah. Like, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be there and, and uh, just come and, come and see what we got. And yeah. you don't have to know anything about this stuff. Nope. You just have to come and enjoy it. No, nope. very, very affordable. In our museum, don't forget about our museum. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ant Ant museum. Museum. we have an antique museum. Minute. museum, but yes, make sure you see the antique museum when really? you come. Yeah, it's huge. It's behind the hall. Oh. And uh, there's amazing things in there. So make sure you see I didn't, the museum. I didn't know that, yeah. that there was behind one. Behind the portables. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. An okay. antique museum. Yeah, but you can't. 
you don't want to give anything away as to what kind of antiques? Uh, this all old farm equipment or house equipment, and then oh, everything's labeled, so and uh, it's it's beautiful in there. Yeah, oh, nice. it's a real treasure. So that's a new addition. No, oh, it's been there for years. Oh, okay. but, uh, I missed that part. Hiram Baisley, I know that name. Yeah, yeah. it was Hiram Baisley Memorial Museum or okay. whatever. Yeah. His name, yeah. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So I before we go to break, what is your most exciting part of this whole like? the most amazing aspect of this Snap and Fear for you, personally, your highlight? Uh, I think, as far as me, it's uh, making sure everything's ready on time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I've been there every day working now for right. three months. Okay. But the big thing would be the, the Four Horse Classic okay. that's coming there on Saturday afternoon. Yeah. That's a, that's a province-wide competition. Yes. So they're all coming in for that, and that's, Exciting. that's a real good show to see. Okay, so be there, everybody. The Napa and Agricultural Show. Thank you to these two. We'll be right back. Hello, thank you for tuning back in to Have a Chat in Miramichi, New Brunswick, because we're filming at Roger's studio. I'm your host for today's show, Judy Loge, and I am so incredibly happy to always be with my co-host, Veronique Arsenault. Thank you, Judy. I love spending my Monday afternoons with you for the last 10 years. Unbelievable. <laughs> 10 years. <laughs> and there are moments I'm sure you wish you were no, not with me, but... Just, no, just some days I want to stay in my jam. Exactly, but, okay. <laughs> but here we are. Thanks for joining us, and we have two more first-time guests, know. which we're really thrilled to have. A uh, lovely couple here. We want to welcome Andy and Jennifer McFarland, and they are the owners of Timber Ship Brewery, which is a happening spot on the river. <laughs> so first of all, you're a lovely married couple with a beautiful daughter, but tell us a few things about yourselves, a little bit of background information, where you grew up thinking, you no, know, just about your family life. Jen? Well, we both grew up upriver, as Mary she would say. Um, I grew up in Millerton, and Andy grew up in Blackville, oh. and we moved to the city about 20 years ago. To the big city. The big city. Yeah. yeah. Uh, about 20 years ago, we do have a daughter, Shailen. Beautiful. She's going to be 23 this year. It's even hard to believe. Yeah. We watched her as a star hockey player, we might just add. She's super on skates. Um, so, and you're, and you're a professional in the district. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yourself, Andy? Yeah, so like Jen said, I grew up in Blackville. We built a house on Rennie Road nice. uh, about 20 years ago. I work with the police department here in town, and yeah, I've been here since 2001 doing that. And oh, where's the time go? I know. You've been on I the know. force that long? I've been on the force that You've long. You've seen a lot? I've seen a lot, yeah. But yeah. now this is all, we're not going to talk about all that back, you know, like your work. We're going to talk about your beautiful business that you own. The good stuff. Right? <laughs> the good Very stuff. Very neat. What would you like to ask them? So, Andy, you purchased Timbership a couple of years ago. What made you decide to launch yourself into brewing? Well, uh, Darren Rao, you? Jeff Sa Darren Rao and his wife Jillian, Jeff Savage and Aaron, they, they own the business. Okay. Uh, so they started uh, Timbership in 2019. Mm -hmm. And Darren and I have been friends for, for a long time, and, and I enjoy beer. So yes. <laughs> it was kind of a match. It's a good thing. A match made in heaven. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, we were, we were big supporters of Timbership right from the get-go. And, and when they decided to make a move, uh, we had a few things kind of line up for us. We had the Pita Pit business in Douglastown, which right because we should add that part, right? You you own a local Pita Pit, and I think you own another one. Yeah, in, in Jack, yeah. that's it. Yeah, it's we, so good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we we had the space that would fit. Mm -hmm. So so the building we have in Douglastown, it had a, just a bunch of kind of storage, wasted space yeah. in the basement. They decided to get out of it. I like the beer, <laughs> <laughs> so we're like, yeah. let's start making the beer. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know? so, why not? So that's honestly that's really how it happened, and and yeah, so I took a little bit of uh, courses on okay. craft beer and brewing, uh -huh. and Jeff and Darren and and Jillian and Aaron were really supportive in the transition, and it just and yeah. they're great people, might I add? Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're Super. they're they're great folks, and yeah, the transition went really well. They supported us kind of through the transition, and big job. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. But you're loving it. Love a job. Yeah, it's, it's, so you're pretty it's, busy, the two of you, with full-time jobs plus a full-time business, not just two business. full-time businesses. <laughs> two full-time <laughs> businesses. Yeah. Jennifer, you also have a new location, a second location on the Ritchie Wharf in Newcastle. Yes, we just opened it this summer. 
So it's cool. a small location, but it works yeah. for us. It's right on the water in Ritchie Wharf. So um, we have 10 taps there, uh -huh. um, nine of which are our brews. And then we have Yip Cider. We have, currently have a blueberry cider on tap ah, for the non-beer drinkers. I do enjoy the Yip Cider. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we have merchandise there as well, a lot of our merchandise. And then we have local um, entrepreneurs. So mm -hmm. we have uh, Chris Dueron's Pottery. Uh, so we have pottery there. We have clay earrings, which I have on from oh, let's Island see, View I'm Clay. Do you have bigger ones than that too? So, yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> uh, Sherilyn McFarland makes those, so oh, there as well. And we have um, some charcuterie boards as Ooh. well as some local fishing flies that Ashley Hollihan makes as well. And your T-shirts that you're both wearing today, obviously from your business, your logo, and yep. they're perfect. So you sell yep. those as well. Yes. yes. So our goal, I guess our goal in getting that space was because we're a small brewery and we're kind of unorthodox with our location in the Pita Pit building, mm -hmm. our, our goal there was to really generate uh, tourist traffic yeah. and get people to try our product that typically would not drive to Pita Pit and think they're going to get a beer. So, <laughs> so because we're, the usual destination yeah, for us. Yeah. <laughs> so we're small and we don't have you know, a lot of listings with AMBL and around the province mm -hmm. and that. So we thought that we would generate a little more interest in our product and a little more brand awareness. And, and I think we're achieving that so far because it's the summer's been great, yeah. like weather-wise. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're getting a lot of tourists, like just from out of town, right. out of the country, trying our beer that mm -hmm. would never... Probably well, I love tried. the idea of Richie Wharf anyway, yes. you know, and, and, yeah, and absolutely. to have, to have the, the, the the brewery there now and like a location there and you know there's like like beer is is great yeah. and yes. you know there's i think a couple of ice cream places and stuff like that like it's really just it's become more of a destiny it's, 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 a, beautiful, it's a beautiful yeah. location yeah. 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 And, it, and it's a tourist you know, destination for people from out of town when for they get to sure. town. That's that's where they go. Absolutely, there's so, music yeah. playing some more yep. afternoon and the boats coming off the river. Yeah, no, exactly. That's really it's nice. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, Andy, tell us a bit about. I know that you inherited the name when you bought yes. uh, bought the brewery, but tell us where Timbership comes from. Yeah. So Timbership Brewing. It was named basically after the history of Miramichi, the shipbuilding history, and obviously the forestry industry. That you know, it was. It was the main industry here in, in the area. So timber ship uh, tied together the two big parts of, of industry, you know, in Miramichi history. So that's that was basically the, from what I could gather, you know, yeah. obviously from Jeff and Darren and talking to them when, when mm -hmm. the name kind of came to fruition, that was their purpose, was to <laughs> highlight the history. And yes. we do that with a lot of the beers and you know, we try to tie in history and folklore with all yeah. of our, our beers and beer names. So. You're doing it right. Because well, the water tower is on one of your Yeah, the water, yeah, the water, hands, yeah, the water tower was the, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the water tower was the, the Miramichi Irish Red. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so when we were purchasing the business, we were thinking of some names, you know, or can designs because we wanted mm -hmm. to roll out some cans and, and Shay was doing some training at the track. Your daughter. Yeah, yes. so Shaylin was training at the track. We were kind of doing some sprints and stuff. She was in her off season. It was the summer, it was oh. around this time. And, and Jennifer looked at the water tower and said, we have to incorporate yeah. that on a can. Good idea. So I said, well, let's just make it the can. So, right. so, that, yeah, so that, that's how it came in. What and a it, team. Yeah, and it, and, it, and it did really kind of kick things off yeah. for us you know pretty well and got our name out there right away so well and we had it we had it featured at the irish festival last year and yes. like we sold out yeah uh, you awesome. know yeah like we fe we featured as much local as we uh, could at it. the irish festival mm -hmm. last year and i think they did as well this year but it, but we sold out like it was fantastic it was great feedback yeah no we've really we've really gotten a really good response even now i mean it's been a year and a half or, or so yeah. since that can's been out and a lot of people that visit Miramichi, you know, that they've been here, they're familiar with that water tower, they, they, they want to buy the red and right. take it to somebody, <laughs> take it to somebody. So, yeah, yeah, no. perfect. It yeah. all worked out so well. Yeah. Jim, what are some of the most popular uh, beers on tap at Miramichi Brewery and what makes them so special? Well, depending on the season right now, so the raspberry sour, so Yum. it's a Sister Marie raspberry sour and it's named after the headless nun. Okay. So, yeah, her name was Sister Marie, and we partnered with Characters Matter and Mamma She, mm, so nice. they do a tour. Aww. So if you have a sour with us, you get a coupon for a discount on their tour. Great oh, idea. And then they give you a coupon for a beer at our, our location as I'm well. I'm a raspberry lover. Yeah. Like, so that's my favorite thing. That's Sounds extremely yummy. popular in the yeah. summer. And then we have the Harley and Hank, cool style. Um, that were named after our dogs, actually. What is it again? Harley and Hank? Yeah. yeah. So we were doing a German, it's a, it's a German style ale. Is what yeah. we do. 
and, it, and you have to logger it. So we, we try to tie all the names into Miramichi. We couldn't come up with a German name, so no. Greg Scott. Greg. Yeah, yeah so he, he, he brews and, and does a lot of things with us oh. at the shop there. He kind of maintains the shop for us okay. because we both have, we both have full-time professions. So, right. so Greg said, well, he said, how about your two dogs? So we have two German shepherds. Beautiful. So oh. Harley and Hank. Love so yeah. It, love it. So he said, he said, name the beer after your two dogs. And, and I said, yeah, Greg, that's a great idea. You know what? Actually, it's so. a family affair. You yeah. have the dogs involved. No, yeah. we've got to love it. And your success, I just, yeah. it makes me so happy yeah. to see, you, you know, people just thriving and bringing business to yeah. the Miramichi and, and doing so well. It, it does my heart happy. Yeah. No, I, I think it's fantastic. So. Um, when you think about, now you talked a little bit about, um, you know, local names and history and things like that. Do you, do you incorporate or do you try to incorporate some local ingredients as well? Yes. Yeah, so, so the how's she going honey. Oh. So, <laughs> so we can't take credit for that. That was, that was Jeff, original. Jeff, Darren and, and Jillian. And, how's and she Aaron. going yeah. honey? How's she going honey? So it's a how's she going honey session ale. Oh. So Scott McFarland, he has a honey bee farm out in, mm. out in Napa. Right. So we use a lot of his honey. Uh, that's our only locally sourced mm -hmm. ingredient right now. Because of the size we're at, we yeah. can't really do you know yep. special batches. But but we use a lot of his honey. Our, our goal is to try to incorporate. There's a, a couple of New Brunswick hop farms, and I'm just a little bit behind on on the order mm -hmm. because we don't really know where we're at right now as mm -hmm. far as production goes. Mm -hmm. But there's Lakeview hops and there's a few local hop farms that I've reached out to. So our goal is to try to incorporate more, yep. you know, local ingredients or, or locally sourced ingredients. But we're just not there yet. But, well, but we do use grow, the, right? Yeah, That's, exactly. Yeah. 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 Right Absolutely. On. Jennifer, yep. um, tell us about the recent Steady As She Goes, which is a phenomenal, <laughs> brilliant <laughs> idea uh, for your spirit and uh, beer festival. Like, where did the idea come from? And tell us a little bit about that. Well, we attend uh, beer festivals all over New Brunswick. Oh. And we were at one and just said it'd be nice to have a man or she. Mm -hmm. um, we did not think it would sell out. We were hoping to sell, you know, two, three hundred tickets. Oh my goodness! Uh, <laughs> and we we were very happy with it. Um, people, we had some really good feedback. The vendors were so happy with the people that attended. Mm. They couldn't believe how nice everyone in Mamershi was. Trying to get to know them. Tell our viewers again the venue and how many people you had and how awesome. exciting it all was. Yeah, so awesome. the venue was at the Mamershi Civic Center, Huge and spot. we had five hundred and fifty was Whoa. the final number. Wow. Uh, yeah, and it. I was organizing, so I need to make sure that everything was in order. And yeah. you know, it was a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun too. So How many vendors did you have? At 25. That's incredible. Yeah. You, organize, you were the kind of the girl yeah. behind it all. <laughs> Who came up with that name? I love those logos. So we work with uh, Chris Thomas. So he's married to Cheryl Bowie, who graduated with. Uh, okay. Excuse me, graduated with Jennifer. Yeah. And uh, he's a designer, and he, he designs a lot of our T-shirts and best. stuff for us. So we reached out to him, kind of let him know, and, and we talked about, we try to keep uh, our sayings kind of tied with yeah. the Timbership, you know, nautical right. kind of theme. Right. So steady as she goes, and we just, we love it. We, we tried to tie that as in. She, so. C -H -I, <laughs> as she, C-H-I, as in Miramichi, which is our yeah. little slang thing yeah. for Miramichi, <laughs> but steady is like trying to keep your balance while you're corked kind of thing, right? Yeah, ex exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So exactly. steady as she goes, yeah. look at her going. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's when you're off duty, but you, you can't yeah. arrest too many people, right? <laughs> yeah. Right But on. you know what, I, I was there, and, and like, it just, it was such a great atmosphere. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, everybody was hadn't seen each other in a long time. Like, it felt like almost like a reunion, you know, like a high school reunion. Union. like people hadn't seen each other for a long time they were tasting different stuff they were you know chit-chatting and laughing and it just seemed like such a great and it was the the weekend of the um, striper cop yes. so I'm sure there was probably quite a few out-of-towners as well well un unfortunately we sold out before then yeah so, <laughs> so we did get a lot of requests so I mean that's things we'll take into consideration yeah. going forward you know if if we do it again next year try to offer we we did reach out through striper cup and we worked with jeff and mm -hmm. amanda and, and they were they were excellent to work with and and we tried to get the message out to the to the people coming into town mm -hmm. fishing but unfortunately it just kind of got you know overlooked or yeah. uh, on their part because they had a lot on the go and, and sure. but it was it was nice to have that many locals you yeah. know supported and, and come in and try craft beer or craft spirits that mm -hmm. You know they wouldn't would yeah. never try so 500 plus people that's yeah. amazing for your first event yeah yeah, yeah. success yeah wow can't wait till next year <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um so do you have any kind of interesting stories or anecdotes or anything that's happened since you bought the company well 
there's a few, <laughs> there's a few. Do that you can tell on TV. Yeah, so we call, we call uh, a kaboom batches, but uh, Greg, Scott, and I, we, we spend some time in the, in the brewery and, you know, it, it is new to us, you know, still relatively new, but it was very new to us at one point. So we had a few incidents where some, you know, batches of beer went down the drain or, or whatever, and that's all trial and error yes. and learning process. So, so it was, uh, you know, it's, it's handcrafted. There's a lot of different variables to making, making the beer and, you know, we do it all manually. So, mm -hmm. so we've had a few, you know, batches go down the drain, yeah. not uh, into cans or yeah. not into kegs, but that, it was all part of it. Yeah, yeah, it's all, it's all part of it. Yeah, learning process. Yeah. 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 Jennifer, what's been the most, I guess, there's many challenges, but what has been the most rewarding aspect of your business involvement so far, both with your Pita Pit and with the Timbership Brewery? I really enjoy, I love where I live, so I really enjoy incorporating all the history of Mamrishi into our products, and I also like meeting and telling the stories of Mamrishi to new people coming here, because mm -hmm. we've met a lot of people in the last two years from different countries even that, you know, yeah. would love to hear the stories of here, and we've always had positive feedback about Mamrishi. So. I love that. I love that it's. I love that it's. You know, keeping both the history alive, but yeah. introducing like you know a whole new market to yeah. it. Right. Yeah. Really exciting. Um, any exciting collaborations coming up, or things that you're looking forward to in the coming year? Well, short term goal, hopefully, is to have a little more of a permanent tap room set up. So that's our yeah. that's our short term goal. Uh, what that's going to look like right now, we're not a hundred percent, but we do have. Uh, you know, a bit of a vision to, yeah. to get a little more of a permanent home base for people that if they wanted to stop by and have a pint in the winter time, especially because sure. we only have our patios right now. Right. So yeah. that's that's our that's our short term goal. Yeah. But our, our, you know, when we bought the business, we we decided to let it just kind of grow organically and, and kind of see where the mm -hmm. you know where the demand took us. So so that's our that's our short term goal right now, and we'll kind of see. Where the long term takes us, but yeah, but one yeah. day at a time. Yes. But for those viewers who are really pumped up now to try mm -hmm. one of your beer and to do all these, uh, give us the, the locations again. So we know Richie's Wharf has your yeah. one new addition there on the water. And then our other location is at 2374 King George Highway, which is on the back of Pita Pit side. So we have a patio yeah. on the back and we have a tap room on the back. You're in the main drag. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that's yeah. a hub now, isn't yeah. it? No, everything's over. It seems Everything, to be yeah. all the businesses are, like, besides downtown, wonderful businesses and our local Newcastle businesses. District, um, the big strip of the King George Highway yeah. is where a lot of buzz is happening, so you cannot miss it. Yeah, absolutely. And any final words or anything you want to pitch or anything you want to say about those people that are no, just traveling? One, one thing I will tell people okay. is not all craft beer is dark beer. Right. So, <laughs> so a lot of our beer are very light, you know, easy drinking beers. Yeah. People have this misconception that craft beer is dark. You know, scary beer, but it's a lot of our beers are right in line with a lot of domestic beers. And Very yeah. good. You so. got to try it, folks. So again, yep. a huge thanks to this beautiful couple who are doing so well uh, with life and in business, Andy and Jennifer McFarland. And thank you, Veronique, for joining me today. To both of you and to our viewers for tuning in. Uh, there's a long weekend coming up. Enjoy it, folks, and we'll see you again for more. Have a chat. Bye bye. <laughs>